Welcome everybody tonight. Um, David Shuey, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors of East Goshen Township. Welcome to How Do I Get Rid Of? You fill in the blank. Actually, Patty Lynch, uh, Lynch is going to fill in the blank for us tonight. Um, I'll learn a little bit more about how to get rid of um, hazardous materials, electronic devices, and, and uh, things that we all look at that we don't have need for any longer. And we're wondering what's the proper and most environmentally and greenest way to dispose of things. So um, I welcome you to the seminar. If Mary Kay is on, she can begin the introduction, but I just want to let people know that there is a Q&A box on your screen if you have questions that you'd like to post there that Patty can address at the end of her presentation. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody um, to hear Patty Linz speak. She's the Recycling Resource Manager for Chester County Solid Waste. She's a um, infinite resource of what, you know, she, she's the one that fields questions from all over the county. How do I get rid of? And she's, every question I've had, she's had an answer for. Um, so I'm looking forward to, um, you know, everybody kind of, uh, kind of figuring this stuff out. We want to do the right thing and, and, and coming, attending this is step one and, and taking notes or this will be recorded and put up on the website if you need to go back and look but you know she's got she's got a lot of good information here so welcome patty and thank you for for doing this for east goshen thank you mary and david and christy and kelly um hello everybody um i am the recycling resources manager for the solid waste authority and the solid waste authority is uh, runs the Lanchester landfill, which is where your trash goes after it gets collected from your home. Um, and we service 80% of Chester County, but in my position, I actually serve 100% of the county. Um, so I, we get a lot of questions through emails and phone calls <clears throat> in a month, um, several a day. And um, the, my idea for this particular program and especially naming it, how do I get rid of fill in the blank? Because that's how many of the inquiries start when I pick up the phone and answer somebody's call. Um, and I started making a list. So <laughs> um, there's clearly a lot out there that people want to know. There are people who really don't want to throw anything away because they know there really is no way. Um, and then there's other people that just want to just get rid of something. Um, so I'm tr going to try and address pretty much everything that I could think of that has come my way um, in terms of, you know, people's um, in, in, uh, questions about um, different things. So I'm going to discuss household hazardous waste a little bit. I'm going to start off with that in, in a couple of slides from now because we are having a household hazardous waste event, the first one of 2021 in Westchester on April 10th, which is a week from Saturday. Um, we're actually going to hold two events at the um, Government Services Center in Westchester this year. Um, our schedule is on our website. You do have to register. And I'm gonna go through some of those slides a little quickly because they might look a little redundant, but we try and run a really manageable program we do have a lot of success with that. Last year, we were in the pandemic. We only had three events. We had to um, implement registration system. We're still using that. It worked out really well, so we're continuing to use it. I have to tell you though, the public was very, very compliant. It was, everything went very smoothly and we wanna continue that. And safety is a big concern of ours when we do those events. Um, there will be questions and, and hopefully good answers at the end. Um, my contact information is there if you want to jot anything down, but I know that this is being recorded. So um, let me start my presentation here. This is a list that I started keeping of some of the questions that we get from our um, public. Um, I'm not going to you know read through all these. Of course, you can just look at them. Some of them seem a little odd. 
and some of them just seem like, oh yeah, I had that question. Um, but these are actual questions that I have had to um, answer and hopefully I gave people good answers. Um, so as we go through the objectives, I do wanna um, read this to you guys. Um, I have three, you know, I used to be a teacher too. I was a recycling coordinator, then a teacher and, and a recycling coordinator again. Um, so I'm used to, you know, creating learning objectives when I do a presentation. So here's where I want you all to end up at the end of this. Be able to describe where recycling fits in the waste hierarchy, which I will show you in a minute. To gain some knowledge, this is the, the crux of it really, of responsible disposal practices for some products and materials. And then finally, to take some action to commit to making one change to try and reduce solid waste at the source, because this is really about source reduction as well as recycling. So um, I want you to know that the Chester County Solid Waste Authority just a couple months ago launched a zero waste plan. Um, zero waste is a concept, a big idea. Um, it's not really to be taken literally, um, but uh, there is a, a zero waste alliance worldwide and if 90% of your waste um, can be diverted from the landfill, they consider that zero. Um, it, it really is about source reduction. It's about rethinking your behavior, reacting, reducing solid waste. And as I said, just trying to change one or two behaviors or habits, um, you can be making a difference. So the zero waste hierarchy is on the left here. And I put the other one up here. It's very similar. The thing that I want you to take away from this slide is I want you to notice where recycling fits in this upside down pyramid. It is not at the top. The top is reduce and reuse and on the one on the right, even at the void. I like to um, use that word sometimes, just, you know, avoid, like, do you really need this thing? And as we go through the slideshow, you might hear me say, you know, some of these things again, but these are important points. Um, so recycling only takes us so far and it's recycling is after we use something, reducing is about um, before we actually even perhaps purchase something. So I said I was going to start with household hazardous waste. I call that HHW. Um, the um, labels basically that you might see on products um, are going to be most likely one of these things, corrosive, flammable, reactive, or toxic. Um, I do have the poison control number on there only because I've had to use it. I have two kids, <laughs> they're much older now, but um, I did have to use it once and I thought that it was a really good um, free service. And I also found out just uh, recently that if you text poison to that number there, you can just add it to your contacts. You just never know, you know, adults, um, you know, things spill on you or whatever. And, you want to know what to do about it. So um, that's just a little public service there for you guys. Um, here's what we take at the HHW events. Um, the things that we take and we don't take, I'm not going to go through all this, but there are, you know, some things that we just cannot accept. The contractor's not permitted to take them. We definitely do not want latex paint. We do not want alkaline batteries. We do not want electronics. Okay. Um, People in Chester County are pretty good about this. Every once in a while, people still think they can bring electronics to the HHW, and we will not take that. Um, the other things there are all kind of in different categories, um, like anything that's radioactive, medical waste, infectious waste, you know, they can't, that's not what the contractor is hired to accept. Um, again, we don't take electronics, computers, appliances. Um, people are pretty good about that. Um, in our program, it's been running for more than 20 years. We've collected over my, uh, 5 million pounds. It's a regional program with the Southeast counties, which works really, really well because what it allows you to do is go to an event in any one of those other counties there that I've listed. Um, some of them are farther away, of course, Montgomery, Delaware, the closest, um, and they're all run the same way. You have to register for them. And if you go on their own websites, you'll see their schedules and things, but um, it is an expensive operation. 
The DEP gives us partial reimbursement for it. You do have to register um, on our website, um, Chester County SWA.org. Uh, you can find the Household Hazardous Waste Upcoming Events page and follow the registration system. We already have a few hundred people signed up for April 10th. So how you can help. Um, people still want to bring us latex paint. Latex paint is water-based. It's, um, oops, it's, um, it um, is water-based and water-soluble. It's not considered hazardous and it can be trashed um, if you solidify it with something like kitty litter, sawdust, even crushed up newspaper, just so that it's not spilling around in the trash trucks. Um, you need to stay in your car. Um, that keeps the lines moving and we're also still in the public health restrictions. Um, keep your, you keep your uh, waste in the original containers as much as possible. If you can ask a neighbor, you know, and maybe double up, um, you know, have just have one person bring somebody else's waste and we just keep a few cars off the road. There are weight limits though. Um, it's a pretty big weight limit, 220 pounds or 25 gallons. Um, the thing that the, one of the questions that we get in our office, which is not just frustrating for us, but more frustrating for the caller, is when people call us in the winter and they say, I'm moving, I have to get rid of this stuff tomorrow or next week. And there are no events planned in the winter. They cut off basically between November and um, April. There really are no events in these five counties. So if you can plan to do your spring clean out, um, you know, while we have the, the events, it's going to be much, much easier for you. Um, so uh, if you have a gasoline in a gasoline container and you want to retain, uh, return to you, just put a big note on it. Th these are no contact events. They're basically drive through. They're literally a drive through event. Um, some of this is redundant here. Safety is a top priority for us. We haven't had any pedestrian accidents, car accidents. We want to keep it that way. Um, you just need to be a little patient. But again, you have to register online. It's just a 15-minute window. You come anytime in that 15-minute window. It really keeps things flowing. The contractor loves it. We love it. People are not waiting. And um, you know, hopefully we have another successful event on April 10th. Just some general safety, because sometimes I do get people call me about um, some things that happen in their home. I am not an expert in household hazardous waste. Um, you can always call poison control again. I have that number down there. If one of these things happens to you or you can you know, go on Google and look things up, but mercury, um, I would say we get a call maybe once or twice a year. You know, Somebody broke a thermometer or something, they wanna know what to do. Um, so I just have a few um, tips on there about how to do it, uh, how to clean it up. Um, you need ventilation, um, you know, remove pets and children. And I'm not going to read all that. Um, you guys can read that. But and pool chemicals are another one. Sometimes they leak, um, and they are oxidizers. It can be pretty um, tricky and unhealthy if you have a situation like that. So. Um, we do take, we take fluorescent bulbs, we take pool chemicals, but um, at our household hazardous waste, this is, you know, hopefully you don't have to do any of these things in your home because everything is just treated, you know, properly, nothing breaks or leaks. Um, batteries, we do get a lot of calls about batteries. Um, the main thing that I want you to know about batteries is the lithium ion batteries can be very dangerous. There is, um, a lot more information on them. For example, there's webinars and things that come to me for me to learn about this. And we operate a landfill and sometimes something, you know, comes into a load that shouldn't be there and lithium ion batteries can start fires. You may or may not have heard that in North Jersey about two months ago, there was a whole recycling plant that caught fire because there was a lithium ion battery where it wasn't supposed to be. So um, if you think your battery is leaking, um, that's the third question on there. Um, you wanna surround it in a non-flammable material like kitty litter or dirt or something as soon as you can. You absolutely do not put these batteries in your recycling can. Do not put them in your trash. The best place to bring them 
is either our small load facility at the Lanchester landfill or one of our household hazards waste events. We do collect quite a few batteries from household hazards waste events. Um, and we basically take any battery that's not alkaline. Alkaline batteries are considered trash because they just don't have enough hazardous waste in them. Um, so you, you need to be a little bit careful with batteries, especially the lithium ion ones. Smoke detectors. Sometimes we get calls about smoke alarms, smoke detectors in your home. Um, most of them today are ionization because they're less expensive and they do have a little bit of um, radioactive material in them. They are on the list of not acceptable because of that radiation factor. You cannot bring this to our household hazardous waste event. You should not be putting it in the garbage because then it's going to come to our landfill. Um, and we're not, you know, we have radiation detectors on the, you know, going through um, from the, you know, the trash trucks and stuff. And we, you know, we do get radi radiation alarms once in a while for stuff. Um, so the best thing is to contact the manufacturer. Um, there's also some mail back options. The Curie Environmental Services um, has a pretty extensive website. I think, I think um, they had a lot of good inf information on there. I think it was Curie. Um, Easy on the Earth is another one. Um, sometimes if you just look at the manufacturer's the labels and things, they might tell you how, you know, if they will take it back. I wish that there were more products made where manufacturers could tell us easily in simple terms what to do with this thing that you just bought when you can't use it anymore. Um, because sometimes it's just not there. And then that's, you know, we get all these calls and, you know, people do want to do the right thing. And sometimes, you know, the manufacturer just doesn't really give you enough information. And I wish that we could change that. So again, um, the waste hierarchy, um, you know, it, recycling used to be a job that nobody wanted to do. And now it's basically a behavior that you can't stop. So now what we're trying to focus on is more source reduction. And that's more thinking at the beginning of this. So before you even buy something or maybe after, you, you know, sometimes it's after you've bought it, but you know, just think, do you really need this? And if you do, how much do you need? Um, how is the package handled at the end of its usefulness? Maybe it can be recycled, maybe it cannot. Um, maybe you can reuse the packaging for something else because sometimes the packaging is, is a bigger deal than what's inside of it. Um, buying smaller quantities. I know some of these are not easy. You know, um, I just recently bought some paint. Everybody buys paint, right? You know, I needed a gallon and a half. <laughs> so I still have a half a gallon of paint. Um, it's latex, but um, you know, if I can, if I could have bought a smaller amount, you know, I would not have probably anything left over. Sometimes if you are in a neighborhood or you have relatives or friends that you're close to, you can, you know, buy a bigger quantity and share it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about everything here, not just chemicals and things, but, you know, sometimes even food, you know, you buy too much and, you, and you, maybe you can share it with somebody. Um, so you try to use things up. Um, a good thing to try and practice, and again, this is kind of behavior here, is to try and substitute something less toxic. Um, I do, I'll get to that a little bit, a couple slides from now here too. Um, there are things, for example, that can substitute for pesticides um, and things in your home. Remove the reason that you need it in the first place and think about maybe this thing can be repaired instead of just throwing it away. So those are some things to think about. And again, instead of buying this, try this. Um, I am not going to go through this whole thing, but I will tell you Penn State um, does have a, you know, good website. They're, you know, they're known for, um, um, you know, pest management, composting, um, natural, um, you know, sci uh, natural sciences, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, sometimes you just have to Google stuff. <clears throat> this is not an endorsement of anything. I'm looking at the bottom of the slide here. HGTV actually has some pretty good stuff on it. EWG, um, there's a screenshot there of that website. It's called Environmental Working Group. They have a lot of information on pesticides and produce. 
they have um, and pesticides in, in food. Um, they're a nonprofit. They also have um, a list of cleaning products that are healthier, cosmetics and things that are healthier. <clears throat> the spruce.com is another one. And there's tons of YouTube videos um, about making things, you know, making, you know, your own concoctions like using coffee grounds um, to deter insects and things like that. So um, there's a lot of information out there on this thing called the internet. <laughs> and um, I, I think it's useful for a lot of that stuff. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, lemon juice or, or um, you know, baking soda and stuff. And, uh, you know, at least try that in the beginning and see if it'll work for you. Um, less harmful cleaning products. Again, this is a screenshot of just one example that I pulled up. Um, as seen on Shark Tank, but I like this idea because it's it's um, you're reusing the bottles and it's um, you just have to buy like a little concentrate. <coughs> and you mix it with water, so you're not buying a huge quantity of something. <coughs> Excuse me, compostable packaging you need to be careful with because your trash hauler is not going to a composting facility, so. It's probably just going to end up in the landfill. Okay. <coughs> Let's get to some nitty gritty here. The Lanchester small load facility is our public drop off um, area. The things on the left here are a lot of things that we do get calls about. None of these go in your recycling bin, absolutely none of these things. We take mattresses for $25. <clears throat> styrofoam, we take at our landfill at our, I'm sorry, our small load facility. We're trying to limit it to like a kitchen size um, plastic bag. And if you can break down the pieces a little bit, that will help us because it's 90% air it needs to be transported in a trailer. <clears throat> we do take batteries. Um, as I said, the alkaline ones go in the trash. Um, they can go to our household, the others can go to our household hazardous waste event or our small load facility. We limit them to like five per trip because we don't have a lot of storage space at our, um, our SLF. So we do have to have limits on some things. <clears throat> um, compact fluorescent light bulbs, which have mercury in them. Again, they can go to household hazardous waste. They can go to Lowe's and Home Depot. I heard that they had suspended that during the pandemic. I don't know if any of them have resumed that or not. And we do take up to five of them also at the small load facility. Batteries and bulbs go in. Um, if you do come out to our place, um, there's a shed um, where we keep the batteries and the bulbs. Um, TVs, computers, and peripherals. Peripherals is basically anything that can be connected to a computer. These are the things that are covered under the Pennsylvania law, the CDRA. Um, we will take three. We, we were taken three and then we had to go down to one. We had to limit it to one because we had some transportation issues, capacity issues um, during the pandemic, but now we are back to three. So we're happy about that. There's no charge for these drop-offs at our um, facility either. <clears throat> Electronics other than TVs. We get calls from people who say, you know, what can I do with my, um, you know, my child's toy that doesn't work anymore you know, that's electronic, um, a vacuum cleaner, a DVD player, you know, just because it has a cord on it, it's electrical, but it doesn't mean that it's going to get recycled. So can it be repaired? Maybe, maybe not. You have to find somebody that can repair it, right? Can you donate it? If it's, you know, really old, usually nobody really wants it either. Um, unless your municipality has a household hazard, I'm sorry, a, um, Electronics, um, like a one-day event. Um, sometimes there are vendors that come and they will take that stuff. They're going to charge you for it. Um, we actually don't want it at our um, small load facility. It can; they, those things can go in the trash. I know it. You know, you might not want to put them in the trash, but um, they're really not going to get recycled. So we we only want the TVs, computers, and the computer peripherals at our small load facility. Um, and wall paint, latex paint, water-based paint, again, just solidify it and put, put it in your regular trash without the lid. You can keep the lid on actually, but either way, 
it just should, should be solidified a bit before you put it in your garbage. The styrofoam is the brand name for expanded polystyrene. This come, uh, can come to our small load facility. I don't know of any municipality in Chester County that <clears throat> collects this curbside recycling. I don't know of any MRF mater material recovery facility that, <clears throat> that accepts it either. So um, either, you know, try not to use it which is hard if you're getting packages delivered, but you can bring it to our small load facility. <clears throat> this is the yes list and the no list. Um, you can see there's a lot on the yes list. Um, food containers are okay. Um, egg cartons, it doesn't matter what color they are. Uh, any of this stuff is. Um, the way that you can tell um, whether it's styrofoam or something else that looks like styrofoam is styrofoam will like snap in half to break it. If you poke your finger in and it's kind of spongy, that is not polystyrene and that would go in the trash. But if it is the styrofoam expanded polystyrene, you can put it in a bag. Um, it has to be clean. You know, we don't want no, no food contamination, no paper mixed in. It's got to be clean polystyrene. It does get recycled. Um, so, um, but it's 90% air. So we try and fit as much as we can in that trailer. By the way, we do have a staff person um, in our small load facility, um, and they, you know, they can answer questions for you here and there. You may see them, you may not, because they're kind of bouncing all over the place, um, trying to, you know, clean up stuff and help other people and whatever. But um, they do not. Our staff, though, does not help you unload anything. Like if you brought a TV and it was pretty heavy, you have to bring somebody with you because our staff just does not handle um, materials from vehicles. Here is another list of how do I get rid of, okay? Plastic, again, none of, these, none of these go in your recycling bin and none of these ever go to the household hazardous waste, waste event. If you remember the, the other slide that looked like this, some of those things could go in the HHW, like the bulbs and the batteries. But everything on this slide, no HHW event, no recycling bin. Plastic bags, most people know by now that the grocery stores will take them back. Um, I understand that East Goshen is doing a challenge with Trex, which is the company in Virginia that makes plastic lumber, um, that you're doing a recycling challenge. And um, somebody from the sustainability committee maybe could tell us a little bit about that at the end about where exactly uh, the folks in East Goshen can actually bring those bags, because I don't know exactly where you set them up, but good for you for trying to do that. Um, Again, it's mostly air, you know, so you got to pack a lot in there. Um, be careful when you are recycling plastic bags. One of the main contaminants for them are is paper, like paper receipts. You know, people forget to take out the paper receipts or anything that's sticky, like a sticky label. And of course, there shouldn't be any food in there. They just need to be clean, dry plastic bags. If they're a little bit wet, I don't think that's a big deal. But, you know, they, they just need to be plastic bags. Um, Unused medicines, I do get calls about this sometimes. Um, you probably know that there are um, drop boxes at many um, police facilities. If you go on the um, Chester County Health Department site, um, uh, there's a map. It might also be on the Planning Commission uh, website, I forget, but <clears throat> the uh, Chester County Health Department has um, a list of where the drop boxes are. I know that they don't want liquids though, they only want pills. It does say liquids there, but I think if you bring liquids, you have to um, put them um, with a um, cat litter or coffee grounds or something. And then there are medicines that if you go on the FDA site that I list there, they have a, a list called the flush list. Certain medicines are okay to flush in the drains and others are not. And some are controlled substances and some are not. So I'm giving you the information there for the FDA site because I think that those things change from time to time. And again, I'm not a pharmacist, I'm not a doctor. I can't give you any, you know, good um, answers for that other than to say check, check that, that website there. Um, home generated needles um, also are something that we get calls about. Um, they can go in the trash, they're considered home-generated medical waste. 
but they need to go in a puncture resistant container. It's really just kind of common sense. <clears throat> um, you know, tape it up, label it, goes in the trash. Your hauler should definitely be taking that. Um, X-rays, I get a couple calls, uh, you know, every once in a while about X-rays. They have silver in them. Um, go to a radiology or diagnostic imaging facility, <clears throat> and they should be able to help you with that. Smoke alarms, detectors, I did go over that already. Um, sometimes the manufacturer is the first thing that, you know, you should be looking at, <clears throat> there might be a label um, on there about returns, um, but I did have that slide there about smoke alarms and smoke detectors. Um, air conditioners and dehumidifiers have Freon in them. We will gladly take them at our small load facility, but we do charge you $20 because we do have to remove the Freon before we can recycle it as scrap metal. <clears throat> microwave ovens is another thing people think they want to recycle. Um, and um, they're mostly metal, so they can go in our, we do have a scrap metal bin. So, um, you know, we take all kinds of scrap metal, but those things would, would go in there. Um, shredded paper, um, not in the recycling curbside bin at all because it's considered a tangler basically, and it's just going to break up into little pieces. If you go to a shredding event where there, there's a truck that um, shreds up your paper, they're most likely going to recycle it, but they're, you know, they have huge quantities of it and they're going to a special place that will take this paper and make it into new paper. But do not put it in the recycling bin. Um, it's not hazardous, of course. Um, if you do bring it to our small load and you bring it in a plastic, I'm, I'm sorry, a, a paper bag, um, we'll take that there too. Um, but um, I don't know if you want to drive all the way out to Narbonne, Pennsylvania, just to give us your shredded paper. Um, but, you know, it can go in the garbage. It's paper. It's going to end up in the landfill. It's, it, you know, that's okay. Um, but um, just keep it out of the um, recycling bin. Um, this slide is a website <clears throat> put up by DEP. They call it their list of unique recyclables. It does need a little bit of updating. There's things on there like, um, they do talk about x-rays, um, things like drywall and um, ceiling tiles, carpet padding, um, just like some kind of weird stuff, you know, but they, they um, as I said, I think it needs, it might be a couple of years old. I know there's a little bit of updating that needs to be done on there. And I did contact them and tell them that they needed to update a couple of things, but, um, that, you know, that's a, another place you can just look at. So some of the things are, you know, not that far away and others are, you know, on the Western part of Pennsylvania. So depends how far you want to go. Um, we take books at our small load facility. We've been doing this since December. Um, the books are resold, reused, and if they can't be reused or resold, they are recycled. Um, we're dealing with a vendor for this. Um, the main thing that they want is the ISBN code, which most books have these days. Textbooks are okay, um, but the better, the, the more, the more they have the ISBN code, the more valuable they are, and uh, they will be reused, uh, resold, um, and they're just loose. They go in the shed. There's big Gaylord boxes. You just drop them in there, um, and um, and we will recycle them. Um, my last few slides I'm talking about here, you know, this has been such a challenging year and it, it's been a whole year now, right? That we've been in this pandemic. And I think, you know, just kind of looking at the big picture, I'm sort of a big picture kind of person. Um, you know, what have we realized from this, um, these several months? You know, we were all a little bit, I think, feeling some pandemic of fatigue, you know, we're kind of tired of it. But it does sort of force you into thinking about certain um, things. Um, one of the um, interesting things that I heard, I think it was in a podcast um, recently, is that the spending that Americans did on goods, not services, but goods, in other words, stuff, <laughs> um, was actually higher in 2020 um, you know, like from March to December last year than it was before the pandemic, which kind of gives me a little bit of pause about, well, if people are buying all this stuff, you know, in a few years, maybe we'll be getting all this stuff 
at the landfill. I don't know, but um, that's kind of an interesting statistic, I think. There's definitely been an, e an increase in e-commerce packaging delivery. This, I mean, I can just tell you from the styrofoam that we get um, and the cardboard that we get at our facility, you know, people are just getting packages delivered. Um, and, you know, we all know why that is. Um, it also kind of forces you because you, you know, you've been home a lot, you might notice how much food you've been wasting. And maybe you were somebody that ate out a lot and now you're forced to cook because the restaurants are closed and you're just realizing all these things. So I am a big picture person, but I'm also an optimist. Um, so I, I, I look at things and I say, what kind of opportunities do we get from this? You know, maybe you've um, been looking at things and figuring out that, you know, personal rewards doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy more stuff. You know, you can just have certain experiences maybe where you reconnect with somebody. And then there's, you know, always the topic of needs versus wants. Um, and then a third um, opportunity there is thinking about what we call the precautionary principle. For example, if you are buying something online, um, you might ask them, well, what kind of packaging is this coming in? You know, and maybe somebody else offers it, you know, in a different way that they ship it. And, and so just be aware of that, you know? Um, and again, back to the food waste, um, maybe you've just you know, figured out how to rotate the stock in your refrigerators and your freezers so you're not wasting things. Uh, maybe you got better at cooking so you're not burning things or whatever, but um, that could be a whole nother topic here, right? Food waste. Um, but, um, but I like to take you know, situations and just try and find opportunities from them. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, through this presentation here too, you're thinking about, you know, maybe there's something I can do at home that that can change um, my situation a little bit and that, that I'm not adding to the waste stream like I used to. This slide is put in there because my son who lives in San Francisco took this photo about a month ago and he said, look at what somebody put in this recycling cart, mom. And, um, you know, we talked about it and he pointed out to me that an upside down American flag is a sign of distress. And here we have an upside down earth. Um, so you can read into that, whatever you want. Um, but this is an actual recycling cart on a street in San Francisco. So what do I want you to take away from this? Recycling is local. And what I mean by that is, you know, wherever you live, whoever your hauler is, who's taking your recycling, they're bringing it to a place that accepts these commodities or maybe doesn't accept certain types of plastic, for example, or something. And you, you basically just need to follow whatever it is they can accept. So recycling is local. Of course, it's behavior. Recycling comes after, it's, it's after the life of a product. Um, and it's also, again, in the middle of the hierarchy. You can only go so far with recycling. Let's compare that to source reduction, which is universal. What do I mean by that? I think that if you could picture yourself living in another country, you might say, well, gee, they don't recycle aluminum over here. Or, you know, I have to throw it away or whatever. You know, recycling is local. Whatever, whatever is in your local area, your region, that can be recycled, you will recycle it. But source reduction starts at the beginning. It's the before. Um, you know, if you're, you know, not using paper napkins, for example, you're using cloth napkins or something like that. Um, you know, anyone can do that. It doesn't really matter where you are. Um, of course, they're both behavior and source reduction is at the top of the waste hierarchy. So I just wanted to get you kind of thinking about the difference between recycling and source reduction. Um, of course, we all want you know, recycling to go on as much as possible. We have a certain infrastructure for it, um, but not everything can be recycled. Um, and then this, <laughs> I was looking at a magazine. I forget what magazine it was. This is like a month ago when I said, gee, maybe I could put this in the slideshow. This was a whole page in a magazine of a trash bag made by GLAD that sort of personifies trash. 
or at least the trash bag. It smells good. It's a happy bag. You know, um, I just kind of thought it was interesting. I'm not really sure what to make of this. Um, are we supposed to fill the bag and make it feel better? Because that's not really the message that we want to share. Um, but um, I just kind of put it in here for a little bit of humor and just to kind of get you thinking about things, I guess. Um, this is my final slide. Again, my contact information is on there. But I, I, you know, I want you to think, what is one change you can make to reduce waste in your household or in your workplace? Some of us have the workplace in the household, <laughs> either way. Um, or something you can do that you can convince other family members or friends to do. Um, and can you help spread the word to be an ambassador for Chester County environment? It's a beautiful county. Uh, we want to take care of it. Um, we do operate the landfill, as I said, where your trash goes. We are, you know, we really try to be good environmental stewards. We have a nature trail, actually, and an overlook at our uh, landfill. Um, but, you know, if you could just, you know, maybe try and make one difference. Um, and I hope that I answered some questions about what the title of this uh, presentation was. You know, hopefully there's something that I addressed in there that you all were wondering about. You know, what do I do with this? What do I do with that? Can I recycle it? Can I, do I just throw it away? Can I bring it to household hazardous waste? Can I bring it to your small load facility? Should I just Google it, you know, and try and find out? Can I contact the manufacturer, the retailer? Um, there's, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, and, you know, it's just great to do these presentations to try and help spread the word about the information that's out there. Um, I do enjoy talking to people. I like to help people. Um, we do get a lot of calls and emails, <clears throat> um, you know, throughout the month. Um, it's spring now. We're having a household hazardous waste event, as I said, in about 10 days. So it's been getting a little bit busier because people are kind of, you know, they're outside and they're thinking about cleanups and, and um, you know, getting, getting rid of things. When the pandemic hit, we were, we were kind of overwhelmed, actually, with people cleaning out their basement, their shed their cabinets um, and their garage, like all at the same time, you know, and coming up um, to the landfill with their waste. But some people just like to bring it up, you know, themselves like these scrap metal things and all that. But um, so, you know, it's been an interesting year. Um, I'm happy to do these presentations, even if they do have to be virtual. It's still a way for us to interact in some way and um, try and get the word out. So thank you for listening. Um, and feel free to contact me, um, you know, for anything that's crossing your mind <laughs> in the solid waste world. Um, Patty, there were a couple questions mm -hmm. sent in um, ahead of time. And one, and some mm -hmm. of them I know you've already addressed, like batteries and medicine, but, but somebody mm -hmm. asked about like cinder blocks and plywood and, yeah. and that. Is there, is there something we can do with that? Well, um, they can come to the landfill. We do take a certain amount of construction and demolition waste, um, C and D it's called. Um, the first thing, the first thing I would do as a homeowner or a resident with those items would be to contact the garbage hauler um, to see if, you know, is there a day, of the, uh, a day of the month or whatever where you can put out bulky waste. Um, yeah, if you're thinking easy. about reusing it, um, I don't really know where those things can be reused off the top of my head, but we do accept them at the landfill. Like if you, sometimes people will rent like a small U-Haul or, you know, if you have a pickup truck or whatever, and you can come to our, you know, you pass the scale house, you tell them, you know, what you have and where you're from. Um, you have to be in our service area, which East Goshen is, um, and, and they'll tell you, you know, to unload it at a, in a certain um, area. You're not like, you're not going anywhere like up the landfill, that's for the trash trucks, but in that small load facility that I keep talking about, there are some bins for that type of bulky waste. So you can go there. Um, it's, we, it's, I think it's $80 a ton. You're most likely not gonna have a whole ton. Um, you know, and it's prorated. I forget if there's a minimum, I can't remember, but I know that that's on our website too. 
What about a propane tank that you, your thing said less than two pounds, I think on the, yeah. um, so, so was that like for a normal gas grill, is that? Okay, let me address that. Um, the propane tanks that we'll take at the HHW are just those little camping size ones. Oh, the camping size, That's, okay. Yeah, those are like the two pounders. The ones that go to a barbecue grill, Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to deal with them because they are big and bulky and um, most people just exchange them. But if you have one that you absolutely need to get rid of, if you go to an Amerigas, the company Amerigas um, mm -hmm. exchange cage, you know, outside of a retailer, by the way, if you go on their website, I should have put this on there. If you go on their Amerigas website, I think they have um, a locator. You know, you put in your zip code and they tell you where they have um, the cages for that. But if you just like take a Sharpie and you write recycle on, on, the, on the actual tank, and you just leave it there, they'll, they'll handle it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, you see, I can't think of everything. <laughs> Chris, Chris, There's just too many things. Christy, I do, I do the answer to that, yeah. Christy, have we received questions during the seminar? Yes, we have some very good okay. questions. Okay. So, Patty, let me jump to uh, you spoke about the shredded paper, mm -hmm. and uh, one of our attendees uh, indicates that he was told that shredded paper was acceptable to be put out with household recycling if it is in a separate container but that you're saying that that is not currently true. That's correct. I don't know who would have said that. Um, I can't really even imagine that going through a material recovery facility. It's, I, I can't even imagine what they would do with it. I think it would just end up as trash. Well, you, you probably know, Patty, that in addition to the pickup through East Goshen Township, we mm -hmm. have a lot of HOAs, so they have individual uh, programs so mm -hmm. well uh, so, yeah so maybe yeah I, I i i would contact the uh, company that's picking up the uh, recyclables to verify that I, right. I don't know i have a hard time imagining that going through a murph and coming out on the other side with bailed paper Understood. i just can't imagine how that would happen so uh, someone else is asking, is there really no way to dispose of alkaline batteries that are, you know, every, everyone that has kids has a lot of toys and a lot of batteries. Is there anything that can be done or should we just now be, be converting to rechargeable batteries as much as possible? Well, don't forget about the button cells. Those are still primary batteries, the button cells. Those right. are not rechargeable. A lot of us, you know, use those. But um, is your question about alkaline specifically, or what? Yeah, that was that was his question. Is there any way to understand? He understands based on what you said that mm -hmm. that there's very little recoverable material inside of an mm -hmm. alkaline battery. But is there any way to to recycle them? Well, are you guys using the coal to recycle battery boxes? The mail back. I'm not sure we're familiar with that. So can you send me information and we'll we'll yeah. try to offer yeah. that. Um, that's right. a mail back program. Coal to recycle is also an excellent nonprofit um, um, group funded by battery manufacturers, um, and they have mail back programs, and you can get the boxes and you can put them out in different places around your community. They will, they will take the alkaline batteries. Honestly, I don't really know if they recycle them. I don't really know. Um, I mean, if they're in the boxes. So I, I, you know, we just tell people they're like, you know, if you, if you take them though, and then, you know, if you take them and it's really the rechargeables that they want, you're just taking up space in the boxes and you know, you can't get as much, you're not getting as much of the stuff that you do, that you do want to recycle. Well, so we'll be happy to research. Listen, they're, yeah, they're, they're not harmful in the landfill. I can tell you that. That's why I say, you know, we can, we can throw them away. All so. right. Thank you. So now um, several people are mentioning that 
we have some local resources. One is next door. Uh, I've often spoken about a local group called Buy Nothing East Goshen, B-U-Y Nothing. And there are several versions of that for other local um, communities and, and townships. And, uh, and often people will offer toys or things that are partially broken or mm -hmm. the plug doesn't no longer work. And often people are handy and will be happy to take them and repair yeah. them mm -hmm. for their own kids. They will take, you mentioned, people offer on the Buy Nothing site if they've ordered, a lot of people during pandemic ordered food through one of the delivery services and they make substitutions. People don't want the substituted product. They'll offer it for free. People Good. will take those. Mm -hmm. So just because you can't think of how you can repair something, that doesn't mean you can't post it on next door. Right. on Recycle or this mm -hmm. Buy Nothing East Ocean. Mm -hmm. And we will, we will publish those. And someone is mentioning here that even used propane gas tanks um, have been taken on next door. So before oh. uh, you throw away, try one of these and we'll, yeah. we'll promote those. That, that's um, so, good, thank you. Yeah, so the social media stuff is pretty good then, the neighborhood groups and all that, yeah. Right. yeah. So someone is asking um, about injections uh, for their their dog, um, is it okay to replace the cap on the needle and dispose of it in a container? Um, I suppose, gee, I never got that question about an animal. <laughs> um, I suppose it's, it, I don't know how that would be different from, um, you know, humans using the needles you know, people that like have insulin injections and things like that. So I would, I would say yes to that. I, I, I mean, I'm just thinking rationally there. Um, Since one unit, the, 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 tip, the tip or the, the cap is tiny. So yeah, it's just, the main, the main thing is you, you don't want to, you know, trash, trash haulers have a difficult job and it, and it's, you know, one of the most, it's like one of the most, um, dangerous occupations, like it's in like the top five or something like that. Um, so put it in a puncture resistant container. You could also just call a veterinarian. I mean, maybe they'll take it back or something, you know, because they might have the container if it's just a one-time thing. You know, I, I often will say to people, you know, have you talked to the retailer about taking it back or have you, you know, can you contact the manufacturer? Because that's, those are the people that make this stuff, you know, and, and it, it bothers me that sometimes you can't get anywhere. You just can't get anywhere with some of these um, products. Um, they don't tell you anything, even if, you know, some of the chemicals, even like if you go on and you look at the MSDS, the material safety data sheets, they'll give you all the information about the properties of the, the chemical, the pesticide, whatever it is you're looking up, the cleaning products and all that, the inactive ingredients, active ingredients, and then when you get to disposal at the very end, it's it's in, inevitably says contact your local authority for disposal. <laughs> and you know, uh, you know, I I am I the local authority? I don't have all the answers either. So, you know, um, so it's a little frustrating. But um, I, I in that case, I would probably just treat it like a, you know, kind of a home generated medical waste. That's really what it is, right? Yes, well, you've raised some great points that we can uh, include in our general research for the community. Uh, I have one additional comment. Um, the, it, it reads this way, how long does the Chester County landfill have until it is full? Uh, how many years do we have left until another solution to waste disposal becomes necessary? <laughs> can you answer that one? I can answer that partially at least. Um, my understanding is that we, you know, landfills have permits. Um, I think the estimated life of our landfill right now is about 15 more years. Um, and, you know, we have a very active board um, um, who, you know, they meet every month and they they look at, they, they have been looking at, you know, alternatives and, you know, what happens when we use up all this land in the landfill and, you know, what's going to happen to the trash. So 
you know, they, they are, I would say, proactive. Um, there's, you know, other ways to dispose of waste than just landfilling. Um, and, uh, you know, they do, they have visited some places, they, they, they look at that stuff. Um, I'm not always, you know, involved in that directly because I'm kind of on the other side of it, but um, it, it is about 15 years. Well, you're now giving us an incentive to adopt the zero waste plan. So if 90% of our, um, what we're recycling now will no longer need to be recycled by us personally, then we'll be extending the length of time for that. Well, the yeah, Go ahead. yeah. The, the idea is to divert the waste from the landfill. Yes. So it, it will survive longer. Um, you know, I, I kind of joke that, you know, part of my position is to keep everybody still employed because, you know, once the landfill ends, right? I mean, you know, where are these operators going to go if it's something different? So, um, but no, it's just good for everybody to try and reduce waste. So once again, Patty, we can't possibly thank you enough for an extremely informative a presentation. And for everyone in attendance, Patty's slides will be available within a few days under the, the uh, Sustainability Advisory Committee tab on the East Ocean website. And the entire um, presentation, live presentation, will be available on the YouTube section of the East Ocean website. Um, so, and so you'll be able to review everything that Patty, all of her materials and everything that she's shared with us. You'll be able to download it, review it, et cetera. Christy, so, I, have, I have some closing comments as well. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Patty uh, Lynch again. This is her second webinar with us and valuable information. I always learn something when I talk and listen to Patty. Uh, um, so thank you so much. Uh, the Household uh, Hazardous Waste event is April 10th, mm -hmm. and it's at the Government Service Center at 601 West Town Road, and you do need to register for a time slot. So if you go on the uh, uh, Chester County Solid Waste Authority website, you can register mm -hmm. a time to, to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the uh, East Goshen uh, Township, uh, Keep East Goshen Township Beautiful is April 17th. There'll be more information on the East Goshen website about how to participate in that. Um, Patty referred to unused medicine. Um, she's not aware, but you all should be aware that we now have a bin at the township building, so you don't have to go down to the police station. Uh, you can take your uh, pills and uh, the solid uh, medicine and recycle it at the township building in the lobby. Um, the... Um, Final thing I would be remiss in not mentioning is in the reuse and recycle uh, area, uh, East Goshen Township, the park is hosting an event called Carnival of Ruin. And it's a, um, a drama that is very professionally put together um, by um, our friends at Westchester University. Uh, exclusive uh, presentation will be in our park on May 29th. Mm -hmm. um, an open air event. All of the characters will be dressed and all of the props are made out of recyclable plastics and materials um, and, and, and will be reused as costumes. And even the poles holding up the tent are made in Delaware in the facility where we, we took down the plastic bags and they created the poles for the tent. So every item in the entire display is recyclable uh, or made out of recycled material. So uh, Carnival of Ruin, May 29th, uh, look for information on the East Ocean Township website. And again, thank you very much, Patty. Thank you for uh, hosting this. I hope uh, it was informative. And again, you know, feel free to contact me, um, you know, at any time um, with the um, email um, or the phone numbers, either way. Great, thank you.